Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Monday sit rep. As you can tell, we've got a pretty sweet lineup here. Not only do we have some minifigures back in action, that isn't even all of them, okay. uh, but we got a bunch of cool kits on restock pre-order, kind of filling out some uh, modern gaps in oh, our yeah. inventory. Oh yeah. Yeah, been a while since the Bradley has been back. Uh, so yeah, let's let's dive right in here. We'll start with this one, give them a little little spin for the camera, show off some of this awesome texture printing. That thing is decked out in yeah. texture printing. This is this is awesome. Very similar to the previous Bradley with a couple of uh, with a couple of additions, but I think really the the, the upgrade is that is that awesome texture printing. Um, obviously it's got all of its functions, etc. That orange cone does come with it, but that has to do with uh, putting the <laughs> rubber over the uh, the wheels inside the tracks here. It doesn't just sit there like that. It comes with that minifig in front. So you've got a, a crew a one-person crew anyways. There you have it. The Bradley fighting vehicle, M2, M3. It's a cool little kit. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. And it looks really cool sitting next to the Abrams over there, ah. which is back. You want to give that thing a spin? Absolutely. I love the stud light cooler. Stud light. All the functions. There we go. In real life, you can pick up the Abrams just like this. Mm-hmm. If Indeed. you were a giant. Um, I think That's probably true. I don't know. If you're, like, yeah, if you're yeah, as big yeah. as you are in relation to that Abrams in real life, you could probably lift it up. Camera guy, calculate that. Go. 17. Yes. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I like that thing. But yeah, the Abrams MBT hasn't been back in a long time, so we want to make sure back on restock pre-order. Moving on from there, we have the Ambulance Humvee, which I think is the most recent variant of the, of the Humvee that uh, Dan has designed. Another fully printed, I don't think there's a sticker on that thing. Because the hood's printed, the sides are printed, the doors are printed. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's that's all stick. It comes with two stretchers uh, along with two minifigs. However, the minifigs are to drive and to help people onto the stretchers, not to not to be your injured people. But <laughs> comes with injured people. Right, exactly. You have yeah. to add your own injured people to to have them get scooped up. But scooped up. Yes. It's a good upgrade. I think we've had, you know, variants of the Humvee Ambulance, etc. available in the past, but this one is definitely the uh, the most updated. And it, like we've said in the past, it's a true sandbox kit. Um, it's incredibly durable. I mean, it's a box, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And then can you, you know, pop the roof off for me? I think yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those kits where With it's got a super easy... There's like specific points where you roof pop the... Roof to pop off. And then, okay, yeah, there we go. I wasn't quite sure where it separated, um, but that is very easy. It's just, mm -hmm. what, four stud attachment. Yep, so it's still super solid. And then you wanna fold those stairs down. Fold the stairs down? What are you talking about? On the, oh, uh, dang. Um, yeah. I forgot about that. Nice. A Lot of playability here. Nice. This is the... Yep, that's your structure. brick built stretcher. Or future Space Marine TARS. The Tars is like... Doesn't look like that got a lot of flexibility. Tars is awkward, cousin. <laughs> I think this joke has run its course. Indeed. Today. Let's move on from the Humvee uh, to the modern Kiowa. This is another one where I do not think we are looking at any stickers. Pretty sure this is a fully printed model. Um, comes with these two minifigures with these awesome helmets, which are also printed and 3D printed. A scary black helicopter. Uh, yeah. I'm really liking this Kiowa helicopter. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it starts off in the kind of the Vietnam era, and they've continually just kept upgrading it. Right. And this thing is this thing is dangerous looking. So I know a lot of people have been like, you know, bring back the little bird, and uh, this is what we're able to do, and also just as cool, in my opinion. Yeah, like I guess because it's kind of what I was I was hinting at. It's like you think about the little bird in terms of like cool like tactical helicopters. Mm -hmm. but dang, this thing's pretty dope. Yeah. No, no, it's <laughs> awesome. In that. Uh, Oh gosh! Correct me in the comments. The GU18, yeah, with the with that. Uh, I think this one's a short, short uh, feed belt, and then that uh, the rocket pods on the other side. What a sweet weapons loadout! I mean, yeah. just a really cool. You know, obviously this thing comes with a a lot of different ones. It can be loaded up with with just about anything. But the two that Dan chose, I think, are are badass. I mean, that's just no other way to put it. So, well, and going back to the to the. Vietnam era one again. You think of either the smaller Scout helicopter or the Huey, right? Um, but it's like this: the the precursor to this version would actually fly in with the Cobras, mm -hmm. kind of ahead, get the people on the ground's attention, firing off their gun, and then the Cobras would come in and right. do the actual big damage. But crazy, crazy helicopter, still crazy helicopter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you know, like we were saying, there's just something about the you can just see this thing. You know, you hear it before you see it, and then suddenly it just drops out of the night. Right. And that's 
awesome. <laughs> Unreal. I really like that. So, and then we also have the uh, the UTV back. I didn't have one built for whatever reason, so I just got the the packaging to show off here. That's another popular one that we've we had back kind of around the holidays, and I think it moved pretty quick because it's a popular stocking stuffer, um, and so we wanted to make sure it's it's back and available. I know those mini kits are tough to keep in stock. We try to do batches of 100 for those. We do batches of 50 usually for, for larger, uh, more expensive kits, but it sometimes doesn't seem to matter. Those those mini kits still just, they cruise. I don't know if people like want to fill out their arsenal and buy multiple of them or whatever, but uh, that uh, I can see why. Because especially when you've got this all loaded up with dudes and uh, perfect caliber brick arms. Right. Yeah, this thing is just begging to be customized. Mm -hmm. Like this awesome little kit, good starter platform. Yeah, that's a good point too. You can you can add some of your own bricks and oh, yeah. turn it into some sort of monstrosity. Add a couple of those U clips and put a put a machine gun on top of it and mm -hmm. have someone chilling in the back. Yeah. Or even when like when I'm doing some pho uh, photography stuff occasionally, and more so in the past, but um, you know the UTV works really well as like a background diorama piece for if you're photographing like mini figures. Mm -hmm. You know you do you put you build a little UTV, add some trees, a little bit of a, a simple background in the back like in the back. And a uh, minifigure in front of that, and you have a nice backdrop for just minifig photography. So, Yeah, it's a cool way to look at it. I, I like I, I, when I see kits, I see background diorama. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but it, I know what you mean, though, because you, know, you put the Abrams in the background, and it's just kind of like, what's, there's a big tan thing behind this person. But if you kind of you know, have something a little bit smaller where you can see the shape of it in general, people already yeah. know what's, what's back there. So a cool background element. Buy it and play with it. Oh, well, that's what you're doing, you know. That's <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Setting it up is is playing with it. So yeah. let's uh, let's dive into the minifigs because we've got some some awesome ones back. Yeah. Before we get to the physical ones, though, I want to list off the ones that we don't have in front of us because uh, these haven't been back in a long time, so we didn't have the physical copies. As a matter of fact, that Navy Seal is like fresh off of the printer. So we have the uh, Viet Cong Gorilla, male and female. Both of those are back, as as well as the. Uh, Perfect caliber brick arms, Mosin Nagant with no scope. Those are the three things that we don't have here actually present with us. But we do have those. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You want to go over those? Do I? Which one first? Well, we, let's start with the seal. Really? We've got a whole, designers, we got a whole designer's <laughs> desk out for the way oh, yeah, The seal's back uh, with that Mark 22 uh, hush puppy pistol on the side. Um, it's got the stoner. Machine gun. I'm so pumped that, the, that Will finally made this thing in brick arms. I've been asking for this for years, and it, it's just such a cool, it's a cool weapon platform. Yeah. Um, so that comes with the figure, actually, in this, in this case, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's got that tiger stripe. Got the blue jeans. What the heck are you wearing blue jeans for? It's so cool. Um, badass. Apparently, they didn't rip as easy as the fatigues at the time. I don't know. I think they also... Makes could, sense. I think they also got to wear blue jeans. Because you can. Because yeah. they can. I think that might be part of it. But, so some simulated fading on that, those jeans, simulated jean texture, um, decked out with some ammo bandoliers, a um, little bit of a loadout in the back there, check that out. Face painting and a little pirate cap, because he's a pirate. I think it looks cool. Yeah. It's kind of like either that or the boonie hat, and obviously the one in the swift boat, still available. Um, yeah. Had, uh, had you know, kind of two different variations, so that's the standalone one. And yeah, with that with that Stoner 6.3, I mean, that's a really, really cool loadout. And probably another one of the minifigs that is just going to absolutely fly. Although I don't think we had a limit on him last time. And we definitely do now. Yeah. Because I think that figure resold for like 50 plus dollars on eBay. Which is just like, buy and enjoy it. Come on. <laughs> buy you know? and just enjoy it. Yeah, right. So that'll be available now. And then obviously the Way Marine's finally back in all three variants. I know we kind of had like a... A stagnant drop of those across about a week or so, but now they're all back, ready to rock. Check out the minifig review for. They're all, all subtly of the different. It's mm -hmm. the same figure, but three different variants. Um, yeah, you got you got to pick up one of each. It's so cool. Yeah, not just flesh tones different this time. They actually have some mm -hmm. some uniform variations. Like we said, uh, Landon went over all that in the uh, in the designer studio tomorrow. Buy one get one stickers. We have a lot of awesome Vietnam sticker packs in stock right now. We have a Huey upgrade pack that you can turn your old Huey, new Huey, whatever Huey, into uh, a medical chopper. We have Viet Cong Gorillas. We have Jungle Boots. We have Marines. And I can't remember if we have Grunts. 
I know we have those other ones. I can't remember the last one. So, but we have quite a few of those available. Obviously, it's not just the Vietnam era ones uh, that are buy one get one. It's all of them across the board. Uh, so take advantage of that uh, one day only, starting tomorrow. There we go. But it's the second Tuesday of every month, so even if you miss one month, you know you get it get it back again. You can figure it out. Uh, remember, the mock contest ends on June first, twenty twenty one. All the minifigs are fair game. I probably wouldn't put any of these necessarily in your Vietnam lineup, but we had a bunch of new releases and we will have, you know, we have the M113 we restocked. A Cobra is still available. Uh, there, there's plenty of stuff out there to be able to put in your mock. So I would assume we've already had some submissions, which I, I have to say, it's a little early. It's a little early. Some good builds, but it's a little early. Let's maybe wait until the month of January is done so you can see everything this guy and Dan have cooked up, ready to go for, uh, you know, Vietnam bricks, oh, yeah. and then once you've got all your assets, then let the creative juices start to flow and start building stuff because we're looking for some unique mocks. Um, just already based off of the initial reaction, I'm betting we are going to have a pretty strong showing uh, yeah. for this mock. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Plenty of time to build, so go big, go bad. Um, you know, make it happen. I'm excited for the like compilation of all the different entries that you're gonna post up like a blog post or something. Like I usually I usually post like our our finalists. Sure. I've, we found out during the World War One contest that if I just randomly post a bunch out there, people automatically assume if they make the Instagram post that I'm a runner up. That's not how it works. <laughs> I'm just showing off cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not how it works. Um, so I just kind of wanted to tread lightly in that sense sure. and, and make sure that we're posting stuff that is actually you know in the. In the finals, <laughs> and so but in we will case, have. In any case, it's awesome just to see submissions, regardless of, of if they win something or not. It's, mm -hmm. I just love seeing people that are just super into history and trying to recreate some cool cool aspects, some interesting aspects of it. So. Mm -hmm. Our grand prize winner for the last mock contest we got got a free bulldog M forty one with the crew. <laughs> all yeah, right. Like that's a pretty sweet grand prize. I would imagine. Uh, that the grand prize for this one is going to be awesome as well. We don't know quite what that's what that's going to be late yet because we're not 100% sure what the summer is looking like, but it will probably be in relation to our next mock contest, kind of like the uh, Bulldog was for this one. Sure. Pretty dang cool. Yeah. Good lineup. Um, and then finally, like we said on Friday, coming on February 1st, the AC-130 pre-order will drop that day. Uh, and it will likely be the last batch of the motorized variant that we are going to do uh, because, well, Bricklink's running out and Lego isn't making it anymore. Yep. And then these train things. It's so cool when it's motorized. <laughs> it's like, why is that the thing that Lego's like, ah, I, mean, I don't want to do that anymore. Right. So, I don't know. No, it's a bummer, but that's this is, a, this is the constant battle of... Uh, mm -hmm. This is why we have to release new additions of kits as pieces dry up, the part supply dries up. Um, I mean, you can see for yourself on, on Bricklink, they have all the, the pieces, um, the sales history of all of them. So it's just, it's, it's a continual battle to try and find enough pieces of certain elements, so. Mm -hmm. And I would say that there's there are very, very few, if any, people who are more tuned into the happenings across Bricklink sure. than, than we are. Right. I mean, we've got people whose literal job it is to make sure that we've got the parts and pieces to be able to create all of this kind of stuff. So that is that is a huge part of, of keeping the custom Lego game in action. And so there's oh, yeah. very little that happens on that site that we don't know about. And uh, we, we try to give heads up when possible. And I know that, that you know the AC-130 is a kit that obviously everyone, I'd love to own one, I'm sure you would too, not gonna happen. But there is people out there who are like, hey, th if this is the last chance to get it, I wanna be ready. So we wanna make sure we got you know enough heads up so that you don't actually you know have to save during the pre-order phase and you're watching them sell sure. and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had known this was the last chance. Now you know, pre-order dropping on February 1st, so. What are the secrets and cool, exciting things do you have planned for us for the rest of the month? Dang. No, so this has been, this is, the Vietnam era is one of the most interesting uh, eras to me, and it's been just kind of a blast researching and designing. Um, so there's a few more, a few more projects that I'm working on. Got, obviously, these, these wave marines were so much fun to make. Um, but, you know, got a sniper coming up, got another machine gunner coming up. Mm -hmm. we're hard at work at the artwork with that as we speak. Um, but I'm just looking forward to kind of wrapping up this month in, you know, with some cool final releases. Um, it's just been fun, man. Yeah, I totally agree. It's, uh, you know, v Vietnam War Month, Vietnam Bricks in general has been a pretty exciting month. It's nice now that we're into the portion of, you know, we're getting regular new releases 
you know, you're kind of in that like transition period of when it's just pre-orders and you're like, oh, what, what land, what, what's he going to make that I'm going to be able to crew this vehicle or this or whatever with? Now I'm starting to get excited for February because the Desert Storm yeah. models are showing up in the case and I'm like, oh, well, now I'm wondering what Landon's going to do for the, you know what I mean? It's like, it all works well, together. I, it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah. I've been, wor I've been, you know, working a few late, late nights here and there and Dan, few. That's Dan will, Dan will be <laughs> still building his, like, you know, he'll build late into the night sometimes and just, it's fun seeing him. Like he's working on this like F117 he's been posting up on Instagram and it's like, I'll see him, it's like, oh, I got this little wing section and I'll go home and then like, when I get back to work the next day, it's like, <laughs> Like you have like half the model just there, mm -hmm. but I was, I mean, I was so skeptical on that F117 on how he's going to pull this off. Cause it's like, yeah, at a first glance, it looks like it's this angular, maybe brick built in mm -hmm. real life. It kind of looks like, oh, that could be made out of Lego almost. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually try to build it in Lego, those angles. It's triangles, don't, not squares. Yeah. Right. They don't like, well, it's like squares on there, which is like, a, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, um, the angles just don't line up. To the to the Lego and to Lego it, and so it's it's crazy that he got this thing to uh, look the way it does. It does speak to the incredible talent to be able to like hit those deadlines, you know, and and not only that, but but run the company while while doing that and make it so you can produce you know more than a One. handful of copies, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, because it, it does. That that is the big part of it. Is that it's got to be replicable. It's got to be yeah. something that transitions well into instructions. It's got to be something that's printable. Um, yeah, it's you know you're not making a one off or even a five off. So um, it's yeah, and he, it's cool. He's pretty considerate of the whole process. Like like he's like as he's building, he's like, do you think we should do this in a, a, a sticker or should, can this be printed or can I build this in brick form? It's like there's a constant like what makes sense to the overall chain because when you're printing here you might not be able to print on other kits, potentially mm -hmm. just because the, the timing wise in the, in the print schedule. So he's, he's got a billion things floating around in his head. And it's cool to see some of the feedback get through too. Cause I know initially it was kind of like, boy, we would, it would take five prints to be able to print this, this canopy. And he was like, well, let's leave it up to the people. So he asked and everyone was like, print the canopy. And he, okay, <laughs> do it. here we go. We're printing the canopy. And so, it's a, it's, you know, I think people appreciate it when they, when they, their voice gets heard yeah. in that kind of sense. So, and obviously it's not always practical. Um, you know, we have to think about batches far beyond this and, and moving on, especially kits that are licensed. You know, you've got to remember that we've, we've got a quota. We've got to meet with that kind of stuff because yeah. you, you've got to pre-buy all that kind of, that situation if you want to go through the right avenues and make that happen uh, the proper way. And so that's a... So I'm, oh, I'm just so excited for the F117. Yeah, I'm that's, that's, that's <laughs> that is that is that is a yeah. truly a, a crazy model. So it's been a it's been a good transition week because I think you know the design team is starting to move on. Not you, obviously, because you have to keep cranking up minifigs. But the design team is working on the pre-orders. Yeah. They're starting to transition over to that uh, um, Desert Storm month, and there, right. there's some cool stuff that we've got coming up there, including a couple of surprises that we won't share right right here right now. There we go. Sure. We'll talk about just the F117 for now. So. That's um, the one thing we choose to talk about is the thing that was highly classified for. Right. <laughs> oh, and that that uh, that article you sent me about the, he, he sent me this this cool thing about this jet that had to land it was at like a, the Skunk Works site. Yeah, I think it was a, it's a British like a British jet had to mm -hmm. make an emergency landing at the like highly classified like, at the time when it was super classified. So mm -hmm. it was cool to just see what they had the process they had to go through. The radio transmissions were terrifying. <laughs> like we got a huge problem. We need to land now. Tough. You can't land there. Mm. Okay, no, we're like, we're, we are going to land. It's either that or we eject. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, you are not going to be allowed to take back off then. <laughs> it was like, oh, this is a dice roll. <laughs> like, we're going to land, but we can't get back up. And also, they want us to clearly go to this other field that we won't make it to. <laughs> what a terrible situation. But and they had to get black bags put over their head at one mm -hmm. point. Anyways, so I should post a link up for that. Yeah, that's, that, that's a, it's a cool article. So there's just some cool stories behind some of that, uh, that, that top secret stuff. Fun to see it transition into Lego. Um, anything else? No, it's not like Yeah, it's been a good Monday so far. We'll see what happens for the rest of the week. At the very least, we'll check back in on Friday, but who knows? Thanks for watching.